And now to help us dissect these disturbing claims from up north, we connect via phone for more analysis by an expert, Professor Kim tae who is an invited professor at numerous universities, including Kanyang, and a former president of the Korea Institute for National Unification, is on the line for us. Professor Kim, thank you for joining us. Yes, hello. Well, first of all, there were speculations and signs leading up to this recent test. How prepared are we to deal with the situation if, in fact, the regime is H-bomb ready? Well, I want to believe that my government has been ready uh, because there, are, there has been many warnings that the North Korea must have been developing uh, the hydrogen bomb as well as uh, boosted the fission bomb. So from now on, what the government should do is uh, to disclose very specific policy reactions rather than just the saying uh, we are seeking response or some vague principles. Uh, likewise, the Ministry of Defense should not just uh, say we are watching closely, uh, rather than uh, the ministry should reshape the deterrence strategy it has prepared against uh, this situation. Uh, but likewise, the alliance, uh, I don't want to listen again uh, that we are cooperating closely. We want to listen to very specific uh, reactions at the level of alliance. So. Anyway, uh, my government uh, should be very prepared because this situation has been expected for a long time. Right, we should be ready. Uh, more action to back up the talks we've had so far. And what specific new actions can the international community, including the U.S., especially the U.S. professor, can take after this drastic development from the regime? Well, uh, we can expect the U.S. actions into three directions. Uh, bilaterally, U.S. will uh, uh, release, will uh, the, uh, add another sanctions against the North Korea. At the alliance level, as I told you, uh, that they will uh, seek ways to intensify allied response. Uh, multilaterally, the United States will uh, make a U.N. Security Council move further. Uh, but, uh, however, the presidential election is just around the corner, uh, and also U.S. government has been distracted by other issues like uh, IS terrorism. So I don't know how specific actions we can expect from the United States. But anyway, U.S. is the key country that can deal with this situation. Right, our strongest ally militaristically. And, of course, uh, sanctions and further isolations, that's been a repeated option so far. Are they as valid as they claim to be? How effective have they been in the past? Uh, of course not. <laughs> Mainly two reasons, you know. The first of all, uh, the North Korea is not democratic countries. Uh, so the isolation uh, and, and hardship imposed on its people is a secondary uh, concern for its government, you know. A second reason uh, is China. We know uh, that we have uh, already five uh, the UN Security Council resolutions uh, plus two chairman statements. Uh, this is really enormous international sanctions. Uh, nevertheless, China has provided the bottom line assistance to help North Korean survival. Uh, that's the reason why the sanctions have not been so effective so far. So, uh, in my opinion, the future effective sanctions should include unanimity, international unanimity, and very clear message that saying that, you know, the continuation of a nuclear uh, weapon program will endanger the survival of North Korean regime itself. At the same time, the uh, international community should make China uh, to uh, substantially participate in the sanctions rather than just the saying we are opposed, we, we oppose North Korean nuclear weapons. I think the big problem now is that the international community assumed that this is a norm, including South Korea, when we have these provocations from North Korea. That's one big problem. And we've mentioned China being an X factor there. Let's talk about Japan. Does this turn of events give Japan a reason to further justify changes to its pacifist constitution, Professor? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, last year, you know, Japan uh, failed uh, to uh, revise its uh, constitution. Uh, but uh, this situation will provide another momentum for the revision of its constitution. But uh, we should not forget that, you know, simultaneously, this situation will give a new momentum for the betterment of uh, South Korea-Japan relations. Uh, we all know the U.S., uh, the North Korea is developing ICBM and SLBMs, and we all know the submarine uh, threat in, 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 in the Sea of Japan, in, in, in the Eastern Sea. So uh, this situation will remind the necessity of 
uh, uh, Korea, Japan, uh, security cooperation uh, permit this situation in common. Right, uh, building together could be a good option for Japan in terms of changing their ways militaristically. Uh, moving on, Professor, South Korea, uh, they have been in the past, South Koreans have been somewhat numb or unconcerned about North Korean provocations. Uh, but do you think things will be different this time around? How much more adverse is this latest move from North Korea? Oh, this is really adverse, you know. Uh, it will become a challenge to international uh, the nuclear order, and it will become a, a threat, a serious threat to uh, international peace and stability in, in this region. And it will complicate uh, the relations among nations in, in this region uh, around the Korean Peninsula. Uh, to South Korea, it will make South Korean military strategy face with uh, unprecedented crisis. So it will raise a lot of controversies. Uh, but there will be voices, you know, demanding South Korean bomb or uh, demanding uh, reintroduction of uh, the U.S. Uh, tactical nuclear weapons. So this situation is really adverse to South Korean security. Well, nonetheless, it's going to be a brand new chapter for the inter-Korean relations and the international community's relations with the regime. Thank you so much for your time, Professor Kim Tae-woo. All right. Bye-bye.